University. I hope it's all right. We're gonna we're gonna kick it off with a little bit of country music this morning. Put those hands together. Hey. Keep going. Well, there's a storm that's coming. I place my faith in you. There's a storm that's coming. I place my faith in you. Cause when that storm is coming, there ain't nothing else that I can do. Come on. With a little ball that's rising. up here singing and they sound good up here but I want to hear how y'all sound this morning Liberty ready let me hear you now Soften up a little bit. Turn to your neighbor and say, You look good this morning. Turn to your other neighbor and say, You sound good this morning. Here we go. Here we go. Near the storm that's coming, blue water's rising, earthquakes and lightning. Everything here is fighting. you've been to us on Saturday nights. You're the greatest student section in the world. And uh, you, you've just been incredible. And uh, I've, I've never, I'm, real truthfully, you're the best student section. And we need you again this Saturday night at 6 o'clock um, to try to get our second win. And I just want to be thankful for you and tell you that. And our guys, I think, have a few things for you. Guys, give a, have a word for them. Uh, I just want y'all to come out and bring that same energy that y'all did last Saturday. That really gets us going to um, go out here and just play the best game that we can play this Saturday against Hampton. (laughs) 
Hey, hey, we really appreciate y'all showing out. We just need y'all to come out 6 o'clock on Saturday. Show, show out, be loud, wear red. Hey, we gonna get the dub. Thanks, guys. Thank you. So, so we, uh, we, we want you to know, I truthfully see that, uh, that football stadium as a, as a worship place for us. It's a place we, we get to worship at, and, and I try to keep that mindset throughout the game. And uh, so I have a unique experience with Mac, and I want to share it with you. And I'm going to be really quick because I know we've got to get to the program. But I'm coaching at a little, little bitty school called Lambeth University, my first head college job. My daughter, Reagan, who's a student. I don't Where are you, Reagan? Where's Reagan? She's here somewhere, I know. But uh, thankful for her. But we used to ride to school, and I would take her in this old Jeep. We didn't have much money then, and, uh, and, and it was an old stick shift Jeep. And, we would, and she would every day at 10 or 11 say, Daddy, will you play that song again? Will you play that song again? Fast forward, I'm the head coach at Ole Miss playing Alabama 2014, game days there. And I'm on Twitter as I'm riding in from the hotel, and Mac Powell tweets to me. And this dude's a legend in my eyes, you know, and he tweets to me. And so I direct message, man, call my assistant, and I, I want to get you down and meet you. And so when I get there, he's sitting in my office with some of his friends. Now, he's an Alabama fan, and, 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 and we're playing them. And we're playing them on that day, but I didn't care because he's Mac Powell of third day, you know. I didn't care. And so I come in my office. My girls are with me. My daughters are with me. And, um, man, I just say, man, man, it's great to meet you. Please sit in my suite today. And even though you're an Alabama fan, we won the game on that day, by the way. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> but, but thankfully, he was there. And I told him this story of Lambeth University, and I will never forget this for the rest of my life. I said, Mac, my daughter, uh, one of the greatest memories I have with her is her telling me, hey, play this song again. And I told him it was your song, Born Again. And he walks over in the corner of my office. I have these guitars signed by Garth Brooks and Eric Church and some of my fans. And he walks over and he gets one of those guitars and he sits down on the couch in my office. And with one of the most beautiful voices I think God ever created, he sings Born Again for me and my daughters. And I will never forget that. Y'all please welcome Mac Powell. Man, Coach Hugh Freeze, y'all. Come on. Let's go. Mm. All right, I need everybody's help on this. An honor to be back once again at Liberty University. Yeah, I'm running for your heart. I'm running for your heart. Till I am a soul. up high. We're going to worship the Lord this morning in spirit and in truth. This is going to be our prayer. I pray that when we sing this, we would mean this with all our hearts. Lord, let me burn for you again. Oh, 
let me burn for you. Sing it out. just getting started this morning, y'all. All right, keep it up now. Now, a lot of you, most of you, if you know, if ever heard of me before, by the way, my name is Mac Powell. Good to be back, Liberty. I sang for a band and wrote songs for a band for 25 years called Third Day. If you never heard of us, just go ask your mom and dad. Maybe they, maybe they listen to us. But uh, I got a new band. Right now, it's called Mac Powell and the Family Reunion, and we do a lot of country stuff. And uh, we got any country music fans here? All right, good, good, good to hear, good to hear. Now, a lot of people have asked me, they say, what do, you, what do you, you know, what do you do with Mac Powell and the Family Reunion? Well, when I ask people, what do you listen to? In fact, if I were to pick out, you know, 100 people here, I'd say, what do you listen to? Most people say, I listen to a little bit of everything, you know? So that's great, because that's what the Family Reunion does. Now, my band, the Family Reunion, is not here, but I got the collective here, and I got all of us here as a family reunion here this morning. So, congratulations, you're in the band. Turn to your neighbor, say congratulations. Now, we're gonna do a little bit of a combination of some of our favorite country songs and gospel songs together. You ready? This is, this is one that, uh, this guy, this low down, sneaky, dirty, despicable guy, named David Crowder stole this song a few years ago. We're gonna steal it back today. Are you ready? Here we go. I wondered so angry as I feel the sin. I would end with my dear Savior and when Jesus came like a stranger in the night. Come on. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Here we go. Well, I saw You sing. Oh, yeah, I saw the light. Hey. Yeah, I saw the light. I saw the light. The more darkness, the more night. Now I'm so happy. You saw the wind. So come on. Praise the Lord. I saw the light. Now I want to introduce to y'all to my good friend to my right. Y'all say hello to Scout Powell. Some of you just met Scout for the first time, you don't realize she is one of the world's biggest Johnny Cash fans. And I know we're at Convo and I know we're supposed to be doing worship, but is it all right if we do a little bit of Johnny Cash this morning? Scout Powell, what you got now? Well, I hear that train a coming, it's rolling around the bend, and I have seen the sun shine since I don't know when I'm so close.
my left to your right, my good friend Tiana. Y'all say, hey, Tiana. Tiana, we got the family reunion choir here. Is there anything maybe you can lead us in? Something that, something maybe everybody knows all the words to. You got, you got an idea of what we could sing? Sing amazing. Oh, amazing. Have a seat. You've been working hard this morning. Have a seat. I tell you what, are we having a good time this morning so far? I am uh, honored to be here and to share the stage with these awesome musicians that are up here. And uh, let's give them a big hand, the collective. Come on. be up here with uh, truly one of my closest and dearest uh, friends of, of a lifetime, someone that, that we've spent a lot of time together through the years, and I know that you have enjoyed his leadership here at Liberty. Um, he is a, I don't know, it just encourages me so much in life, and truly, I um, cannot tell you how thankful I am to the Lord for bringing David Nasser into my life and, and having just an amazing, amazing friend. My family is here. My wife, my beautiful wife, Amy, of 23 years is here. Amy's over here. I have a couple of my children here. We're trying to talk. I've already got one that comes here to Liberty. We try to talk, talking two more into coming here. And um, so we are a Liberty family. And, um, and just thankful for this school. And my family and I, Amy and I, so often we, we tune in online to watch Convo and to see you guys just going forward in worship, just loving the Lord and crying out to God. And to see that, um, I forget what you guys called it, when you met, when you, uh, met for the sunset uh, thing recently, what was that called? Sunset worship, <laughs> that makes sense. And to watch that, to watch that, uh, you know, video of that, it's just amazing. God is doing some amazing things here at Liberty University. And um, I'm thankful that you, that you not only come here to receive, but you come here to be able to give as well. I know there's so many ministries that are, that are and, and things that are happening that are going out of here. And so this, this next song that we're gonna do is on my, my, my new country record. It came out about two months ago, and I love that I get to do kind of both worlds now. I get to gather together with brothers and sisters and worship the Lord, but I also get to go in these little bitty dive bars, you know, that have the electric bull pulled, you know, plugged up in the corner <laughs> and, and kind of love on some people that, you know, and play in some places that Third Day never would have played in and hopefully play in front of some people that never would have come to a Christian concert. And, and just kind of love on them through some songs. This next song is one that we share with people that, that talks about going through hard times and going through struggles. And that's something that every single one of us is going to go through in life. And someone is coming to our lives, whether it was a friend or whether it was a family member, and helped us through that struggle and through that hard time. And how can we not, when they've helped us through, how can we not do the same for somebody else? And so that's what this song is about. This is called Red 
on a rose. Sometimes life don't work out like you planned it. Sometimes it's so hard to understand it. Which way's up and which way's down? What you're looking for ain't always found. Well, I'll be your blue sky when it's raining and the green grass under your feet. It's complicated, you can count on me. I'll be your shelter when you need one. When the winds of winter blow, I will hold you close and never let you go. Like a red on a rose. Sometimes you feel like your prayers are answered. Sometimes you might fall taking chances. If you do, I'm there to catch you. If you wanna give up, I won't let you. I see that light shining. I'll be your blue sky when it's raining, and the green grass under your feet. When the world gets complicated, you can count on me. I'll be your shelter when. Just for one more time, I'm going to ask you to stand up on your feet because this ain't no sit down. Need every voice lifted up in this. Lord of all creation, of all of earth and sky, heavens on the tabernacle. Liberty, you sing it now. God of wonders beyond our dead sea.
side stage for five dollars today so be sure to grab one it is my favorite country cd at the moment not to suck up or anything um, today we have oh and mac is going to join us later on today um, mr bates and pastor david and mac are going to play a fun game at the end so make sure you stay tuned for that um, i have the privilege today of introducing on alien day preeminent Uf ufologist Gary Bates, he relocated from Australia to head up the U.S. Office for Creation Ministries International as its CEO in 2009. All right. He has been married to Francis for 38 years. Yeah. He's on the editorial team for Creation Magazine, which now has subscribers in over 110 countries and is also the producer of CMI's award-winning documentary, Evolution's Achilles Heels. Gary has authored or co-authored six books on the creation versus evolution debate and is best known for his book, Alien Intrusion, UFOs in the Evolution Connection, which is the only creation book to ever be an Amazon top 50 bestseller. It deals with the troubling and growing UFO phenomenon from a biblical perspective, and it has now been made into a major motion picture that has been shown in theaters worldwide. Before we look at the trailer for that, I do wanna let you know he'll have some resources available side stage as well. Pastor David will talk a bit more about that in the Q&A, but for now, turn your attention to the screens. Tens of millions of people have seen UFOs. Many even recall personal encounters with strange entities. And the popular view is that these are advanced aliens visiting us from far, far away. Hi, I'm John Schneider. This compelling new movie takes a deeper and honest look at the events, the beliefs, the experts, and the people that have shaped our beliefs in all things otherworldly. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. It was the mayhem surrounding the cover-up that created what's being called the Roswell incident. I had multiple experiences with like little beings in my room. It's global. We have reports now from 140 countries. Our commanders and all told us just keep your mouth shut about it. Join us and live in peace or pursue your present course and face obliteration. In our investigations, we were finding things that we just couldn't get answers for. I was literally thrown into the bed. I cried, help me, Jesus, please help me. It's one thing to just deny. It's another thing to say, we believe you had an experience, but here's God's take. When one takes a deeper look at this phenomenon, it reveals one of the most disturbing yet powerful affirmations of the truth of the Bible and Christianity. I'm going to be very disappointed if UFOs turn out to be nothing more than visitors from another planet, because I think they could be something much more interesting. <laughs> nothing says Parent Weekend like alien intrusion. Come on, everybody, give it up for Gary Bates. Thank you. We uh, obviously this summer, 
when the whole world just started to uh, blow up on the idea of storming Area 51 on this day. Uh, and I noticed that all of you were just piling on. Uh, we moved our guests for this particular day to a, a, a different day so that we could get, uh, you know, this topic in front of us. We knew that a lot of us have grown up in the church but have really never seen through a biblical lens uh, this discussion uh, kind of come on a stage. And we contacted one of the preeminent ufologists. Yes, that's a term. <laughs> ufologists in the world. Uh, Gary to come. He graciously accepted, moved his schedule around so he could uh, be here with us today. Such an honor to have you. Before we talk about Area 51 and we talk about UFOs sure. and all these things, uh, tell us a little bit about your own uh, story. Well, sure. I, uh, you know, related to this subject, I grew up with a science fiction fan. Uh, I was an evolutionist, like a lot of uh, my colleagues in the ministry. And uh, the, the whole concept of evolution, you know, Big Bang 14 billion years ago, and you and I are just the product of time and chance, is what we're all taught in the secular education realm. So it was a, that issue was a huge stumbling block for me in coming to the Lord. So I did not get saved until my adult years. And then immediately I got saved. I wanted to deal with this issue. And that's how I got contacted with the ministry that is now Creation Ministries International. I got involved uh, with them, helping them out as a volunteer. And here I am 30 years later, I'm, I'm the CEO of the, of the US office. So the whole UFO subject is actually, believe it or not, a subset of the creation evolution debate. Because they would say, you know, in the Big Bang, which is part of the, the, you know, the grand scheme of evolution, that in a 14 year old, a 14 billion year old universe, you know, our Earth, our Milky Way might be in a relatively young part of the universe. And so there could be aliens who've evolved a million or even a billion years in advance of us on the evolutionary scale. And therefore, they're a billion years advanced in their technology. That's how come they can build hyperdrive spaceships, visit the Earth. And believe it or not, what's kind of become mainstream science today, because you know, our studies of the human genome, DNA, show that this is the most incredibly complex code we've ever seen. Uh, mainstream science is that, well, maybe aliens visited us and seeded life on Earth. Not so, you can see it's become a substitute religious idea rather than say, well, there's a creator God, well, maybe aliens created us. And so, uh, you know, that's kind of what led me into to researching this. And being a science fiction fan, I thought maybe we can use this subject to lead people to the gospel and so on. But when I started researching it, uh, David, I got a lot, lot more than I bargained for. I, I had no idea at the depth that people are involved in this stuff. So as a Christian, uh, uh, can you just tell us um, how has science actually deepened your faith? I was thinking <laughs> about you just a second ago as we were worshiping wow. and Mac was leading us in God of Wonders Beyond This Galaxy. And I looked over and here you are like really plugged into that idea, singing it with 10,000 people. How has science deepened your worship? How has it deepened your faith? Well, sure, I speak in about 80 churches a year and that song comes up all the time when they know I'm coming to speak on creation. And I always find it a struggle to speak after I hear it. Because, you know, one of the problems, David, I think with science fiction, uh, and I'm a science fiction fan, don't get me wrong, but it's boys and girls, science fiction. <laughs> uh, and the idea of evolution in other worlds is it causes people to look up in the sky and say, I wonder what else is out there. And I think that robs God of his glory. See, when I look out there, I think about our Milky Way galaxy. Our sun is maybe one of two billion stars in our Milky Way. Our Milky Way is estimated to be 100,000 light years across. If you could travel at the speed of light, it would take you 100,000 years to cross it. But then when you get to the next galaxy, that's two million light years away. And the next galaxy after that, 20 million light years away. And there are potentially hundreds of billions of galaxies, all containing hundreds of billions of stars. And the Bible says, God determines their number and he calls them by name. And I think what this whole UFO thing does in a lot of ways, and Christians sometimes unfortunately buy into it, they look up and say, what else is out there? I think we should look up and say, wow, my God, the heavens declare the glory of God. And, uh, and here's something, you know, a, a, lot of, a, a lot of Christians do that because they say, well, why did God make the universe so big? And I could talk about that for a long time. It's not big to him, obviously, if he made it. In the beginning, God, who was there, then made the heavens and earth. But when I think about this incredibly massive universe, 
And I look up and I think about what the psalmist said, what is man you were mindful of him? That God chose this little rocky planet to create life. <laughs> and when we, when we fouled the nest, when we messed it up, that creator who created those hundreds of billions of galaxies, hundreds of billions of stars, came to this earth and became a lowly human being to purchase us back to him so we can be reconciled to our creator. I think that make, when I look at the size of the universe, makes the miracle of salvation that much more pertinent. And so for you, you see it through a very different lens. Like you just said, in the beginning, before there was a beginning, there was a beginner who had no beginning. God who had no beginning and has no end. Yes. The creator of the heavens and the earth. Uh, so a created being didn't create creation. No. The uncreated one did. And this UFO conversation, especially when it's um, just hijacked by evolutionism, really bumps up against that, right? There, there's an agenda behind it with so much uh, backload that really is trying to get people to think differently than what God has played out in scripture for us? Yeah, well, it's actually, a, it's actually a substitute religion. Sociologists have said that. We've got a sociologist in the movie that says that because, you know, when you think about those three big questions, right, we all know what they are. Where do we come from? Why are we here? What's our meaning and purpose to life? What happens to us when we die? Well, the only two games in town are creation evolution. But let's work through the scenarios. If evolution's true, Ultimately, there's no meaning of purpose to life. We're just evolved pond scum, basically. What happens when we die under that scenario? No life after death. But if God is creator, we're created with meaning of purpose. And what happens to us when we die? Well, that depends on what decisions you make in this life. But let's think about it another way. What if aliens are our creators? So the answer to question one will determine why you're here, what you think your meaning of purpose to life is, and what happens to us when we die. And so in a lot of ways, there are people who've had experiences and seen things, and they're real experiences, they're certainly not aliens, and as a result of that experience, it's become a substitute religion. It gives them meaning and purpose. Maybe the aliens can tell us what's, happened, what's gonna to happen to us when we die, etc. So let's just get to it. Do aliens exist? And by the way, speaking of aliens, I can tell by your accent that you're Chinese, and so are, are you an alien, and do uh, they exist? <laughs> well, actually, I am an alien, I'm sorry. I can prove that I'm an alien right before you today because here's my alien resident card, all right? The green card. The green card. <laughs> That's right. I used to have one of those. So, and then yeah. I became an American citizen, so I don't need it anymore. Okay. Praying for you. Maybe God will grant you that one day. It's awesome. I, uh, so why the phenomenon with, if, if, do aliens exist? And, and, and why, the, why the interest from Hollywood to social media to just pop culture, from Star Trek to you know, Star Wars? I mean, to just people are obsessed with looking above and beyond. And so do they exist? And why are people asking that question so much? Yeah, well, I mentioned it, as I said, one has become a substitute religion. But think about this, 150 years ago, would people really look up in the sky and say, I wonder what else is out there? Right. Uh, they'd be very much focused on their own existence here, but what the idea of evolution and, and plus technology discovering the size of the universe and science fiction today with, you know, aliens zipping around in the hyperdrive spaceships. I mean, I'm a, I'm a Star Trek fan. I come out of the closet for you today. There you go. Where are you? All out there. Okay, live long and prosper. But as I said, it's science fiction, but it does, it, there's these futuristic ideas, and I found that people are fascinated by the future, even Christians are. We, we look at prophetic ideas and we try to figure out what's gonna happen in the end times and so on. So that kind of really appeals to human nature, and I think we're at a time, uh, unlike any other in history, where you know, when we look at the size of the universe, people are asking what else is out there, and, uh, and that's one of, the, one of the issues. So can you explain Area 51 to us uh, and the phenomenon behind that and why people felt like that was where a UFO had crashed? Explain that. Yeah, well, the, where they think a UFO has crashed is actually Roswell, New Mexico, but what they think is, uh, and I've been there twice, so uh, I think I'm one of the very few Bible-believing creationists ever to, to get to, uh, to kind of minister there, but, uh, the town is really uh, given over to this idea. It doubles in size every July 4 weekend for the annual Roswell UFO conference, and people go there looking for meaning and purpose. You know, some it's just fun, but some it's a lot more serious. Now, what they think is that an alien flying, uh, cra uh, flying saucer crash landed on a ranch. It actually appeared, that said in the newspaper in 1947, crash uh, at Roswell. 
And then what they believe is that the government hit it up and they took their technology harvested from the alien ship, took it to Area 51, and that's how come we've got lasers today and we've reverse engineered the technology uh, from the ship. But Area 51 um, is a secret base. It's a secret government base. We develop stealth technology there and those types of things. And so naturally, they're not going to let you on the base. Um, you know, why do we develop secret technology? Well, we were fighting a cold war with the Soviets for many years and we don't want them to, to know what's happening. And actually, that's what Roswell was. Before we had satellites in the atmosphere, uh, there was no way to monitor what other countries were doing. And under the Freedom of Information Act, we know what it is, they had these uh, arrays of giant weather balloons and underneath them they had some very, very simple boxes with acoustic listening devices and they hoped that the jet streams would carry them over Soviet airspace and guess what, we could, because of the altitude, listen to signals and maybe listen to their above ground nuclear tests. So when the, the, the balloons crashed at Roswell, yes, the government covered it up because they didn't want anyone to know they were trying to, to listen to these foreign powers. That's it. So thus storm Area 51 today, <laughs> 920. Uh, I want to show you this video uh, about today. Th this has been all over the news. If you woke up this morning and turned the TV on, it was on Today's show, it was on Good Morning America, it was on Time, CNN, everybody's buzzing about it. But this video right here to me had a few lines that are worth you quoting all day long to your parents that are visiting for family day. Watch this. Alien hunters are descending on Area 51. They're hoping for a party or a peek at UFOs, depending on who you talk to. For decades, the U.S. military base deep in the Nevada desert was rumored to be the final resting place of a crashed flying saucer and its alien crew. Now it's ground zero for a weekend of extraterrestrial festivities. It all began earlier this year with a joke on Facebook, a call to storm the base. More than a million people responded. Are you guys going to try to raid out? <laughs> no. <laughs> hey, if, if other people are doing it. <laughs> Some locals are warning they're totally unprepared for an influx of visitors. Even organizer Connie West admits some of the details are a little fuzzy. I've been told anywhere from five to 50,000 um, could, could be here. I don't know if that's really going to happen or not. You know, I, I can't anticipate or predict what's going to happen, but do I think there's going to be a disaster? <laughs> No. Do I think somebody might get hurt? Of course. She estimates at least 30,000 people will actually show up, so she's scrambling to order enough portable toilets. So far, she has 30. <laughs> That's the greatest line ever uttered at a convocation. Amazing. We should just watch that three times in a row and just dismiss in prayer. So good. So. Four million people have uh, claimed to have been abducted by aliens. Twenty million people claim to have had uh, a, an encounter of some sorts or have seen something that they believe was a UFO. Yeah. And so this is more than just a small fad. Yeah. Why are people claiming this? And uh, what can be not just the scientific response to it, but one of the things I really love about you, and it comes across... Uh, when you hang out uh, with you for a few minutes or when you watch the DVD uh, of the documentary is that you have a pastoral heart. And so you don't just discount people, you honor them even if they maybe don't agree with you on certain sure. things. And so why are people believing this and what is the, the correct response from us as believers? Sure. Well, let me just work through it. You did ask me, do aliens exist? So, you know, as a, working for a creation ministry, we have a Bible first approach. So it's not about what I think or what might happen or what you think or whatever. It's about what we can learn from the Bible. And in, although the universe is as vast as it is, the Bible discounts the idea that God created intelligent, sentient life. And I'm talking like in the order of human beings, people who can ask those three big questions and are morally self-aware. It would violate the gospel. The, the fall in Genesis 3 is universal. The heavens and the earth have been corrupted because God, remember, he's going to create a new heavens and earth so that the entirety of creation has been affected by sin. So if God had created, you know, Vulcans out there, right, Mr. Spock and his fellow Vulcans get cancers, diseases and die because of what Adam did, they can't be saved because they're not descendants of Adam. Jesus is our kinsman redeemer. 
And so at the end of time, they get rubbed out with no hope of salvation. I mean, that would make God unjust, and that's something he's not. Now, having said that, does that mean, well, people are not having experiences, you know, at all? They are. And I said at the beginning, that was what was very confronting to me, because, uh, and you know, you don't have to believe little Joe Christian here. You can talk to scientists and scholars who've studied this. When you talk about millions of Americans, they all have very similar experiences. They've got no connection to each other. They don't watch the same science fiction movies. And so a lot of even atheistic or materialistic scholars have said, these people are having experiences. So what is it they're having? Well, yeah, they're driving their car or they're in their room at night and they see a light or in some cases a little entity actually appears in their room and they say, I've chosen you, you're special, I've got a job for you. And when you think about that, David, it's not exactly something you can go to the office tomorrow morning and tell your colleagues around the water cooler, is it? So it's a very isolating experience for people and that isolation kind of drives them deeper in. You know, you, you can't understand, it didn't happen to you. So if we go up to them and say, well, let me tell you what it is. You know, it's all spiritual, it's demonic. You've just shut the door. So what I've learned, and it's difficult for me, because you know, we, we're always keen as Christians to tell people what it is or where they're wrong. Uh, I put it this way, I think there's three things we need to do. All right, listen. <laughs> if you ever meet somebody, you need to listen. You need to listen, and you need to listen. That's it, because they've often never shared. And the biggest surprise when they share their experiences with me is I say, actually, I believe you. And they go, you do? You do? So that creates a bond of empathy. And then the next step is to say, tell me what happened. Tell me the stories you're told. And this is even today, I mean, we've been studying this now for 40, 50 years. Even the secular ufologists will say, this is dangerous, uh, it's deceptive, it hides its true intention. And listen to this, we have over 400 examples now, okay? On the cover of the DVD, you'll see a guy in the middle there, he was in the, in the, in the video, uh, Joe Jordan, head of MUFON for the whole country of South Korea. He's been studying this for years. He's a former evolutionist, former skeptic. We have over 400 cases where these abduction experiences have been halted by people calling out in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I come from a pretty conservative Christian background. I don't mix in these circles. I'm not a demons under the bed type of guy. But you know what? If we believe the Bible, it's always said there's a spiritual realm. Right back in the Garden of Eden, the first deception took place. And whether it's aliens or UFOs or supernatural events or ghosts, we're dealing with the same deceptive phenomena. And guess what? When you ask these people, what messages did you have? Jesus comes up. He's just an advanced extraterrestrial. He's really not the creator. He's really not the son of God. Hey, you know, I got taken on board the spaceship. I met Jesus, Buddha, Muhammad, all living together in peace and harmony. And you fuddy-duddy Christians have just got to embrace the new age. It surprises people that why they focused on these religious ideas. So you can use the abduction phenomenon from a Christian point of view to show that there's a deception going on. Yeah, I think that's one of the things that immediately made us want to get you here to leverage this moment because it goes beyond a conversation about UFOs. I love your pastoral heart. When someone who is in a spiritual warfare that they don't even understand and recognize comes and says something, you validate, right, them as a human being yes. with the dignity of, I believe you. You're not saying, I believe that's what happened. You're saying, I believe that's very real for you. That experience was real for you. And that again builds a bridge instead of burning one. Yep. And then you can begin to not only build a relationship but then speak biblical truth. But the main thing is you listen, you listen, you listen. Two ears, one mouth for a reason. Well, you know what? If the Bible's the word of God, if God's the creator, we should have answers. And here we are, even in a weird subject like this, I can go to the Bible and find answers. And one of the things I find tragic, David, and this is not a criticism because this is a weird subject. Most of us have never looked at it. But a lot of these people have been to the church. Yeah. And, and the church has ridiculed them. And, and it's ridiculed them, but we don't know what to do with it. And so what they do do is they go off to UFO research centers or UFO clinics and they say, hey, we've got people just like you here. And they get, a, they get embraced and they get welcomed. And that, again, reinforces the deception of what's happening to them. And I think on this issue, 
we have an incredible opportunity. That's why we produce resources. You know, you, you don't know how to deal with it, but you can give them a book, you can give them a DVD, you can go to creation.com, our website, and we've got lots of articles on that where you can help people, not just in this area, but the whole creation evolution area as well. So that's, you know, what our ministry does. We've been in operation for 42 years to provide answers, firstly, to equip you as a Christian, and second, so you can fulfill the Great Commission with that information. So uh, we ask you, if you would, since you do so much more than this, you're not just a ufologist, you also just on, on a day-to-day -day basis talk about creation and um, answer people who are confused about mm -hmm. evolution um, uh, with such biblical lens, you know, uh, and give them equipment. So can you tell, talk to us about not just the DVD uh, and just this book, but some of the resources that you have here. Yeah. Uh, they're gonna be right there, by the way. Max CD is also gonna be available for five bucks. This is one of those days where just come on down and grab some of these resources. I think they'll be well worth every penny, but tell us about what's available there. Well, we, we have hundreds of resources. Let me just say this. We live at a time, David. I've been doing this for 30 years. We, have, we live at a time when we have more information to support what the Bible believes about Genesis origins than any time in the church's history. This is the most exciting time to be a Bible-believing creationist. We were having dinner with some of your colleagues last night. We were talking about genetics, geology, dinosaurs, you know, poster child for millions of years. Well, we've got scientific evidence that refutes that. So some of the resources down there, if the guys want to put them up on screen for me now and I'll go through, just go through them. Uh, this is probably the most powerful antidote to evolution you'll ever see. It's called Evolution's Achilles Heels, the book. And the DVD has won two Christian Film Awards 15 PhD scientists. So people say, what about radiometric dating? Well, we have a nuclear physicist talking about radiometric dating. And evolution makes certain predictions and that we should be able to validate. Well, we look at what evolution predicts, look at real science, and guess what? It doesn't work. So uh, next one, there's a book and DVD. Uh, the, the next one is the Creation Answers book, I think. This is 65 of the most asked questions about creation versus evolution. Who did Cain marry? You know, where did the water come from, from the flood? Where did the water go? How do we see distant starlight millions of light years away if we think creation's a few thousand years old? There are answers, and there are free study guides for all of these. Uh, next one, guys. And here's the, uh, the alien stuff. Um, and yeah, this is now in its eighth printing. It gets updated. And one of the things I want to mention about this, from the early editions, actually hundreds of people have now contacted me. And you can kind of use that as a bit of a test bed Right? So I'm just not coming up with a theological idea. I can actually ask them questions and validate my theological ideas based upon their experiences. So the book's there, and here's the movie. And uh, my board pushed me into making this a couple of years ago. I'm glad they did. But it's been in theaters around the world. It's a real first for a creation ministry. And boy, have we had some feedback over that. I've had hundreds of emails from people who've had experiences. And guess what they say? It was just like you said in the movie. What an opportunity we have. So yeah, it's important to note the reason that something like this is vital and important and definitely worth a convo out of 88 a year is the subtitle of that very DVD says unmasking, right? A disillusion, unmasking a really a lie, a deception. And so what does it look like for us to be interested in saying the truth sets people free and as liberators, we ought to be able to have answers for the questions people are asking, no matter what they are. And I'm so thankful for your heart and your ministry. We want to, uh, this semester, we Can I been, just say something yeah. too? I forgot, I apologize. Um, some of those resources today are actually half price. Right, the just ten, 10, bucks. Ten, 10 bucks. Just plonk $10 down, grab one, and I'll be down at the end here as well. Absolutely, so Gary's gonna be down there. We'd love to meet you. But uh, we, this semester, Gary, have been blessing different dorms in different ways. Uh, so it started with like donuts, then it went beyond that to shortbread cookies, then it went to some other stuff. So we did a dorm renovation. So I know y'all are thinking where we're we gonna bless. Of course, today, Storm Area 51, we're gonna bless East 51 today. There you are, East 51. So we're gonna play a game with Mac Powell and yourself <laughs> since it's today. Here's what we're gonna play. Let's watch this. 
It's time to play Liberty University Space Invaders. Watch closely as our three galactic contestants battle it out on classic video game consoles to see who can defeat the descending onslaught of alien invaders. Each player will have 45 seconds to post the official Liberty University Space Invaders high score by taking down as many invading extraterrestrial spaceships as he can. In the end, only one will reign victorious. And if that one is today's guest, interplanetary warp speed captain Gary Bates, he will win all three classic arcade consoles for the dorm he is playing for today. East, East 51. 51. However, in order to win for East 51, he will need to post a better score than the intergalactic Star Lord, Mac Powell, and the hyperdrive sky surfer, Pastor David Nasser, who will achieve galactic glory. Will Gary Bates be able to take home the grand prize for East 51? We'll find out in this episode of Liberty University Space Invaders. Let's go! All right, guys, we're gonna we're gonna get the game started here real quick. All right, on your mark. Well, here we go. On your mark. On your mark. Get set. Go. Let's check it out. All right. Looks like. Looks like Mac Powell's out to a commanding lead early. Mac must be playing at home or something. Gary Bates, gotta catch up. David, you gotta pick it up, man. You are slacking. What's going on, bro? You David, it. he's gonna have to double his efforts if he wants to make an impact today. All right, remember, Gary's gotta win for you guys to win today. Mac Powell's well out ahead, but Gary's surging. Gary Bates getting close, guys. Make some noise. All right, guys, we got about 15 seconds left. David is still way, way behind. Oh, Mac just got shot. Mac got shot. Oh, Mac died. Mac got shot. Oh, he got shot again. Mac died. Gary taking the lead. Game over for Mac. Looks like Gary's going to take it. Three, two, one. Gary Bates is today's winner. Come on, Gary. All right. Hey, East 51, we're going to give you all three of these games for your dorms, all right? So have fun with them. Hey, God bless you guys. Have a great weekend. Go meet Mac. Go meet Gary. You guys are dismissed. See you at the football game. We love you. Get out of here.